All right, hello. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at a weapon that has got a bit of recognition recently by popular YouTubers such as Sabuchi and Dystopia. So Dystopia went first. Sabuchi was recommending the gun by a friend and started loving it. And you probably know which one I mean by now, but it's the Phage, or as we Greeks like to call it, Faye. Why do we call it Faye? Well, it's a brand for a uh, Greek yogurt. That's all you need to know. So, what does my Faye have? So my Faye has uh, a bit of heat damage. That's what it has. It has only heat damage, matter of fact. So, um, if my calculations are correct, even with this much status chance, we should easily just go 100 hit procs on any enemy and just outright kill them. So, I would love for this Riven mode to be a bit more status based, but since I cannot do that, it's fine. And we can go roar if you want to see crazy damage, but generally I don't think I need to use any abilities or anything like that. Um, and you may be like, uh, what do we replace Riven mode with? Well, Bane mode. Bane mode would be the best. Oh, I have a former that is waiting for me. Also, um, newsflash. I tried the disruption mission, so I can add it to newer videos. So one thing I noticed about the disruption mission instantly is that beam weapons absolutely suck on it. Um, good news so far is that on the disruption mission series, we haven't had any beam-like weapons or any weapons that work specifically with status effect stacking. So... Very, very good so far on that part. But the Faye is a weapon that is all about status effect stacking. It is a beam weapon. So therefore, it, just, it relies on that to kill enemies. And in general, the, this weapon is not really an AoE weapon. The AoE part of the weapon is pretty, pretty bad. And you only really use it for um, single target damage and the infinite stacking. So... For my case, where I have a Kuba Nuke or Godrol Riven, and I can get many, many procs on any enemy with that, um, this is just kind of worse version of the Kuba Nuke. But for you, this may be broken. So, normal enemies, it looks like this. So, mechanically, this gun is pretty interesting. So, we have these beams that if we don't aim, they just go wherever. And the more we aim, the more they just go in the middle. So if we stop it at right there and then unaim, it will keep the beams there at an angle and you get a bit of a decent AoE using that. So interesting to know this. So in theory, if you learn this gun pretty well, you can make it sort of AoE viable. But generally, you want to kind of, like, use it as it's supposed to be. Just do the damage. And damage, it does a lot. Look. Look at the hit procs. That is a lot of hit procs. And that was not many bullets. So, you know, this these can stack up very, very quickly. And any kind of armor strip, after hit procs happen, will just one-shot any kind of enemy. So, um, it's really funny. Now, I would love to show you this gun, especially at level cap, but I don't play that much. And there are obviously better ways to utilize this gun if you want to go with external armor stripping. And one of them would be going corrosive heat, and then your corrosive armor strips with two emerald archon shards. Kavat buff, heat it. 530k hit proc. Considering hit procs do um, suffer from the damage reduction of the demos, that is very strong. Like, that's kind of crazy. So, quite happy with it. Uh, when I rolled the Raven mode, I immediately got to the idea to just, you know, say, screw it, go full heat and see what it does. And it worked perfectly. Now, there is no multiplicative CO on this gun, but you can imagine that if I put procs on an enemy, 
he will die very very quickly so for the next enemy we're gonna roar we're gonna kill him normally with just you know shooting and he dies very quickly but for the second enemy we're gonna actually prime him as well so you can see that the compressor is OP 3.2 million damage like that the heat proc dealt 3.2 mil so you you can imagine that especially if you play with a bit of hidden inherit uh, with your primer that can get absolutely stupid but overall this is like one of the best disruption normal disruption weapons in the game now for the newest disruption mission this weapon completely sucks. I wouldn't pick it at all. So, you know, not recommended. However, on the newest disruption mission, you know which gun is really, really good? Haha! -ha. Yes, it is. It is super, super good. And I think it's about time to show it, because I know a lot of people will be interested in seeing how the Stalta or my Stalta performs under these conditions. So, uh, I'm not going to change the build much here. I'm just going to, you know, since Eclipse and Roar are not so good anymore, I'm going to sacrifice a bit of strength, take Vigorous Swap. And see if I can actually one-shot it. I probably can't, but two-shotting is 100% possible. Which is really nice, considering how tanky these Necromex are. And honestly, I mean, if you really came prepared with your setup, Stalta could probably take you to level cap on this mission fairly easily. So, yeah. Let me show you in practice what I mean by what the gun is doing. So, first kill is not gonna come by very easily. Okay, dead hit is stacked. Let's see. Oh, it blood broke him. But yes, it um, does pretty decent damage. I think for this type of mission, the best kind of weapons you would be able to take are like fully automatic crit weapons, something like a buzzer. Like, if I had to choose what the best weapon would be for this type of mission, it would definitely be within that category. But obviously, more testing is needed. So far, Stalta has worked excellently for me. Knowing that even without armor stripping, I'm doing fairly well on it. Also, I believe the guy's headshot is on the cock area. I'm not sure why. Should test it. At least that's what I've read so far. Mm-hmm. No dead hit sucks. Honestly, I think that's the hardest part about this mission. You don't get stacks, really. What is this bro doing? So one hand down, second hand down, and then... Boom. Honestly, with bleed procs, if you force a bleed proc on the Salta with... Um, Tony Arcane, go Bane of Mormor or something. I, I don't know, though. Bane of Mormor, since it's not primed, 
I'm not sure how much better it would be. It would be way better if Eclipse was, like, utilized for the most part. But, I don't know, overall... I like the setup that I'm using currently. But yeah, you can easily get better results, especially if you... Yeah. Especially if you try to maximize the effectiveness of your modding by adding armor strip to some areas. Because the Necromex do have a lot of armor. So this is no priming at all. I'm somehow killed him faster. I'm not sure. And the Graslings, the secondary fire doesn't do much to them, but the primary fire is hurting a lot. And you know, this is kind of why I said that fully auto primary weapons would do very well here. So, in my opinion, something like a Tetra would be insane here. But yes, I will do some test things, I will check it out and see what's the best, so... Bleed proc, and you're dead. So yeah, Bone Widow dies quite fast. Maybe faster, I don't know, but... Overall, it is pretty good. It's not the best, but it is really good. Takes care of enemies easily. Take care of demolishers pretty easily, and you know, it's really, really good. However, I want to try out the second wave because I want to see if I don't prime them if I actually do more damage because of damage attenuation, which would mean I would need to change my builds to get the most out of my starter and just go pure damage instead of going for, um, you know. Going like galvanized CO and all that. So, as I said, overall testing needed, but so far it's good. Even with just pure brute force damage, it's really, really good. Also, melee weapons should be insane here. Like, if you get some good melee weapon that deals massive damage, yeah, would uh, highly recommend. Oh, Acolyte coming. Goodbye. Any keys? I guess should be reaching. Wow, super generous. I heard uh, a dink. Well, let's check now. Oh, shit. I mean, I am not sure to be honest. It, it half HP him. But it's bone widows, so I I don't. Mm, mm, in theory, it could damage attenuation is a weird mechanic in this game. In practice, it sh should never. No, it does. Look at that. Oh my god. Okay. So yeah, don't. We gotta change the build. No priming enemies, just go for pure damage. You might be able to even one-shot him. So you gotta change Galvanized Aptitude for Bane of Murmur and just go pure damage. Hope for the best. That's kinda crazy. Pure damage is just the way. Or, or you could uh, change Galvanized Aptitude 
for this build specifically for internal bleeding and force a bleed proc so you can guarantee one shot let's see the normal necromech too void rig Yeah, they're just... I think it does more damage, yeah. So, change uh, aptitude for the for the thing, yeah. I need to build the third Salta, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Because I can't use the foremost from my other two Saltas. I don't have mold capacity. That's just crazy. We're Salta maxing so hard with this one. Alright, Grizzlings, so I'm not sure, let's see, this guy shouldn't have damage generation, right? So we'll just shoot them here and then just primary fire, and then they just get one-shotted, right? Yeah, okay. So for Grizzlings, multiplicative CO does wonders. You know what, let's try on the last one instead of the secondary fire, we'll just go uh, multiplicative CO and primary fire, because, yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah, see what I mean? If you have a weapon that is crit and it's uh, fully automatic, it should completely destroy them. I think that's the play for this type of mission, so... Tene Tetra, very good contender. For sure. Um, generally, I don't know. I'll check some weapons and let you know when we're on the arsenal. But first thought is immediately Tana Tetra. Like, that gun should be insane on this mission. We shall, we shall see that very soon, though, about Tana Tetra. Don't worry. I will test it. There is a Tana Tetra video coming. That is a spoiler alert and a half, but I mean. What did you expect? I'm making a, a video list called Epic Disruption Weapons. There is no way I'm not including a Tena Tetra. Like, that gun is insane. So, um, for this mission, I don't know about Trump, not Bubonico should be insane. Tena Tetra should be insane. Um, maybe Shadow, if you go a nice setup. I'm not sure though about that. There's too little ammo. Flux Rifle, if it was pure damage, maybe, but I don't think so. Perry Gale. That could be interesting. I should try that. Uh, Nagantak, I won't work because of the of the thing. Aeolak. Aeolak could work. Aeolak could be really good there. Well, we'll see. I'll do some testings, but there are, there are guns that you can use for that mission. But from my experience so far with the mission... The best guns would be primary automatic rifles that are crit and have multiplicative CO, so you can prime the target and then just shoot him with your fully automatic weapon. Uh, it's kind of the same thing that the Archon meta has become, for me at least, where to do Archons, I usually either take a Tetra or I take, where is it, Burst and Prime? This this could also be sick on it, but I don't know, it's, it's hit scan, so it's weird. It's just, you know, the, the 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 regular stuff that you would take for for a disruption mission, but in the form of a primary crit weapon. Overall, yeah, I think the 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 new mission is fine. I've seen on Deep Arc Comedian there is some weird stuff going on with the um <laughs> the amount of distance you need to travel between points. But yeah. I mean, overall, seems nice. I will try it out a bit more, for sure. And, yeah. So, Stalta build. Uh, in case anyone wondering still what the Stalta build is. But, like, I don't know. I've sold this a million fucking times. It's dead hit here instead of uh, Merciless. But, I don't know. In this mission, dead hit doesn't seem too useful. But what would you go? Dexterity? And just use melee? I don't think that's worth it, to be honest. But could go frostbite if you pair it with uh, an epitaph that could work or just just frostbite in general and you know i can still just use compressor it will hold proc them so yeah i mean 
I will, I will, guys, I will show you guys on the next video probably how the Tetra does against them because the next video is about the Tetra, and I will also probably go and try out the AO like on the new mission and see how it delivers. And I'm not sure if I will do another video on the AO like I might just showcase it in a small video to just showcase how it performs against them in just a small one minute video or something like that. We'll see. For now. Uh, you know, not going out of schedule here, but the Faye weapon, this, really good. Uh, if you want to do normal disruption missions and you want to go level cap really easily, uh, this is probably one of the best weapons to do that with. And it just, uh, it just bothers me how this gets recognized now but the phantasma has been recognized for so long when this is literally what the phantasma prime should have been just i don't know the the phantasma prime is just a disaster i don't understand how the regular phantasma can be so much better than the phantasma prime and still have issues but overall yeah Faye, very fun gun very fun gun just wish the mechanic was a bit faster when you aim down the side. But overall, really good. I suggest it for sure. So with this, I thank you very much for watching the video once again. I will leave Discord and Twitch links in the description as always. And I'll see you on the next one.